The sages tell us that God often teaches us lessons not just through what he writes in the Torah, but where he writes things. For example, last week's Torah portion ended by describing the kosher laws, telling us which animals we can and can't eat. This week's Torah portion picks up by discussing the laws of the Mitzorah, the person who develops a skin condition as a result of violating the prohibition against Lush and Hara, the person who said something negative about someone else. What's the connection between those two topics? Why are they juxtaposed? The sages explain that there's a logical reason. Just as God created the animals first and then humans, he first details laws relating to the animals and then goes on to laws relating to humans. But there's a deeper lesson the sages explain. God is hinting to us that just as we're meant to be very careful about what goes into our mouths, making sure that we only eat kosher, we're supposed to be just as careful about what comes out of our mouths. Don't say anything negative about someone else, whether it's true or false. And that seems to be a particularly relevant lesson nowadays when we spend so much time worrying about what goes into our mouths, whether it's keeping kosher for those of us who do, or counting calories, or measuring portions, or making sure to eat healthy, or perfecting our Starbucks order. Uh, I'd like to get a large half-calf scalded almond milk latte, four pumps vanilla, one pump cinnamon with an extra half shot, sweetened with agave nectar at 167 degrees with room for cream. And there's another lesson. This week's portion is sandwiched in between last week's, which also includes the tragic story of how Aaron, Aaron's two sons died, and how he remained totally silent in the aftermath, accepting God's decree. At next week's Torah portion, which picks up after the death of his sons, why are the two topics juxtaposed? Again, to tell us, unlike the Mitsoro who got the skin condition for saying something negative about his friend or fellow, sometimes you're meant to be silent and not to say a word, just like Aaron. The sages, in fact, discuss the concept of the tinus dibor, the fast of words. Sometimes people can meritoriously take on, preferably in non-binding fashion, a commitment not to say a single bad word about other people for a certain period of time, 30 days, or maybe a day, that's easier, or maybe an hour, or can you do 10 minutes? And there's another law that's not well known. There's a prohibition in Jewish law against nivopeh. You're not supposed to say any curse words, any expletives. I remember learning in college that if you need to use an exclamation point at the end of a sentence, you didn't do a good job constructing that sentence. Go back to the drawing board, rework the sentence so that you can show that it's important, that it's emphatic without the crutch or the shortcut of the exclamation point. Similarly, if you need to add a curse word at the beginning, middle, and or end of a sentence, then you didn't do a good enough job with that sentence. Go back to the drawing board and rework it to wipe out the curse word. One of my young twin boys, whenever he gets surprised, uses the phrase, what the? And whenever he does it, I'm simultaneously embarrassed and heartened. I'm embarrassed because it sounds very adult and because he clearly learned it from a parent, which I'm sure was me. But on the other hand, I'm heartened by the fact that he ends the sentence, puts the question mark after the word the. He doesn't need to add a curse word in order to make his point. Back in the day, if you wrote a letter that was nasty while you were angry, either about someone or to someone, you could go to sleep that night because you couldn't put it in the mail till the next day. By the time you woke up in the next morning and calmed down, you could say, you know what, I don't need to write that letter. And you can rip it up or keep it in your desk drawer. But nowadays, in the space of a few seconds while angry, you can text or email or tweet something, send it out and regret it instantly. But that's why God invented the draft folder. When you're angry, go ahead, write the email if it'll make you feel better. Dear former friend, you blankety blank, 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 blank. Or did you hear what so-and-so did? And then just go to sleep at night. Don't send it the next morning when you've calmed down. Reread it, and hopefully you'll realize there are certain things that are better left unsaid. We should all spend as much time counting our words as we do our calories. Mm -hmm.